On Vancouver radio station CFOX, Metallica's Kirk Hammett spoke fairly candidly about his experience taking guitar lessons with Joe Satriani. It was actually very poignant, Hammett said of his first lesson with Satriani. His first lesson to me was, learn your lesson. Don't waste your time, don't waste my time. I expect you to know everything that I gave you in a week's time. I was, like, this guy is serious. But you know what? I did it, and he kicked my ass. But after a while, I was taking two lessons a week from him. I became so thirsty for what he had to offer me, I was just, like, bring it on. It's all making sense. I wanna learn more. Hammy then discussed Satriani as a player, saying ever since I first met him, he's always played incredibly, with all the sounds and all the bar stuff and tapping and crazy licks that no one's ever played and still probably never plays. I mean, he's just such a unique individual as a musician. Joe Satriani commented on Richie Blackmore calling him a solace, too polished player in an archived interview that was recently published out into the open, Joe Satriani said to Mitch Lafin, via Blabbermouth, well, it's unfortunate when somebody that you look up to has something negative to say about you. So that part will always hurt. I wouldn't hide my feelings about that. I get criticized on both sides of the fence for the opposite offenses. And I don't quite understand it other than most of the time, when someone has criticism, it's because they're challenged and they feel that they have to strike out. So I get it, I understand why he would have to say something negative. I can kind of laugh at it because I'm not like that myself. I tend to just look at the positive of another musician and focus on that. This is what Richie Blackmore said about Joe Satriani. To me, listen to Joe Satriani, he is a, a brilliant player. But I never see him, I never really hear him searching for notes. I never hear him playing maybe a wrong note. Jimi Hendrix used to play lots of wrong notes because he was searching all the time. Where the hell is that, that, that correct note? And when he did find that right note, wow, that was incredible. But if you're always playing the correct notes, there's something wrong. You're not searching, you're not reaching for anything. Um, but that's not to say that I, he is a very brilliant player same as steve morse fantastic player i'm just glad they found a guitar player to carry on because i thought i was going to be shackled to this band for the rest of my life you know it was like a ball and chain thing and luckily they said oh we found someone thank god i can get out you know i think that um i don't really i, I haven't listened much i just know that joe satchel and steve morse are brilliant players and I, I remember steve morse with the dixie Drakes, fantastic stuff um i think um, I think what you're, you, you mean may be that certain people play from the heart and other ple people play from the head. <clears throat> um, I prefer a heart player. I prefer someone like um, a blues player with the, uh, the guy that plays uh, Jeff Healy. Jeff Healy, I think, is tremendous. I think the John Mayall guy is great too. Um, people like that, I prefer. If I hear someone really technical and running up and down the fingerboard, I can hear that for a couple of minutes. Then I, I start to get kind of bored and I'm thinking of other things, like playing football or something. But um, I do like to hear someone reaching for something, you know, not quite making it, and sometimes they do make it. And they're very polished. Like with Joe Satrani, it's a very polished player, almost too polished. That's what worries me sometimes. But um, it's um, different strokes for different folks, as an enemy of mine used to say, um, which is such a corny saying. Um, it's, it's whatever, some people are into that head music, that head technique, some people are into the heart technique, some people are into blues technique. I personally am into the minstrel technique. If I hear someone playing a lute or playing a crumb horn, it just moves me. I, I don't know why, um, guitar players I find kind of boring. And that's not meant as a dig. I just, I find myself boring and I have to go and lock myself away. It's, the guitar is a wonderful instrument in certain ways. Like if you're listening to someone like John Williams play, then you know a man can play. And he will play a fast piece, a slow piece. He will emote, he has it down. That's just awe inspiring to hear someone like that. I think the main objective is to move 
make people think in their heart. I personally am not interested in appealing to other musicians. I would, I have more of a, I, to me it's more inspiring to move someone who doesn't know anything about music but has feel. They can say, I, I don't know what you're doing, but I just feel that something there. That to me is an incredible compliment. Whereas opposed to, well, you just run up and down the fingerboard, that's, that's wonderful, very fast. Really all that means is I've just practiced the hell out of the, the guitar. I'm not really saying anything. I'm going from A to B, but not seeing anything on the way. Tool frontman Maynard James Keenan said that very technical players like Joe Satriani aren't his cup of tea, noting they lack humanity and tend to be a little stiff by his standards. The musician told Destroy All Lines, I've worked with a lot of people over the years that are very technical and very good at what they do, but they are not necessarily creative. The creative force is where some of the best music comes from. Not from guys who, no disrespect to Joe Satriani, those kind of very technical, school players, I think a lot of times they lack humanity. There's not a lot of breath that comes out of the music that I hear from, I don't want to say educated, indoctrinated musicians tend to be a little stiff. That living, breathing interaction with mistakes, with not necessarily perfect approaches, that tends to give the music the character, that melds really well, if you do it's right, it melds well with the digital. Not only that but Maynard also expressed his opinions recently on how most musicians today have a problem with being too one-dimensional, explaining the whole issue to Rolling Stone, saying, I think bands in general, not necessarily the ones I'm involved in, but I think bands in general kind of have the discipline enough to learn how to play their instrument. And they have some kind of accolades or positive reinforcement for some achievements they might have had early on. Playing guitar, playing drums, so you know, as human beings you like that praise, you like those accolades. So you pursue it more to get more of those things. He added, but in general, most musicians nowadays and in recent history, they lack the discipline outside of that one discipline. So in a way, they're one-dimensional, so when success comes, they don't have the faintest idea how to deal with it. And most of them implode. Most of them fall apart. They didn't have the discipline back then, they just had the discipline on what their single focus was, whatever instrument it was. Mastodon guitarist Bill Keller admitted he's not the biggest fan of such guitar masters like Joe Satriani and Steve Vai, saying that although they are insane guitar players, their style kind of bores him. Asked by Total Guitar on where do you find most players are going wrong, Bill replied, a big mistake people often make is trying to add too many notes and overcomplicating their ideas. I always try to tell people that it's best to come up with a simple rhythmic idea and then paint in the higher notes to make these tiny adjustments into new chords, using notes as semitone out. That can make all the difference to a song. It's not about how fast you play. A lot of people just know scales. Look at Joe Satriani or Steve Vai, they're both insane guitar players, but I went to see Satch once, and I got bored after a couple of minutes. All he did was shred through scales constantly. I guess it sounds cool, if you're into it, but I was thinking, play a goddamn riff. I guess that makes me a riff guy. During the rest of the chat, Keller further discussed the importance of mastering the rhythm aspect of guitar playing, saying, I can't stress the importance of rhythm enough. For me, it's better to get a cool rhythm going and then figure the notes out later when you think about what emotion you want to convey to the listener. Is it super evil? If not, use it as a stepping stone to your next idea and eventually you'll have 123 different riffs at your disposal. It's like a painting, you start with an idea, which is a rhythm, and then you use musical pencils to draw your idea. For me, the sketch is the root notes and the melody is how you fill it out where the emotion of the song comes from. Listen to the intro to Blood and Thunder, which Brand Daler actually came up with, but he didn't write it on guitar, he just hummed me the riff. It has to have that rhythm, otherwise it completely loses its feel. Guitar virtuoso Joe Satriani explained why he started wearing sunglasses and how it ended up being one of the staple marks of his image. In a recent interview he said, the sunglasses thing happened as a joke. I surprised my band on tour by showing up with my head shaved. And they were so horrified that they said I had to wear a hat and glasses or they wouldn't stop laughing on stage. 
then I realized that having that curtain to hide behind allowed me to be more creative and feel less self-conscious. My buddy Sammy Hager feels the same way. He says he can't go on stage without sunglasses because he's so embarrassed to be a singer. He's the last person you'd expect to think that way. He was also asked to single out his least favorite aspect of showbiz which he replied, saying, being around people. It's a major drawback, right? Like, if my manager called me and said, you'll be meeting 50 people every day before the show, immediately I'd start getting butterflies in my stomach. It's silly. I mean, I'm a grown-up, and I've been doing this my whole life, and still my initial reaction is, don't do it. Even Slash back in 2015 with the New Zealand Herald explained why he would rarely ever take his glasses off, this is what he said, I rarely look out at the crowd. It makes me very uncomfortable to look directly into the face of the crowd. I'm in my own little world, playing my guitar. I play from the heart, but it's very insular. I think it was just a hangover thing that turns into an everyday thing. Now, wherever you go, everybody's got camera phones taking your picture and you just end up never taking the shades off.